Welcome to lesson four. As a tester, you need to learn how to run and how to debug a test. So this is the most important video for you. So watch it as many times as you like. So in this video, we will be covering what is a trace viewer? How do you create debugging reports for tracer? How do you create reports for yourself to look at the test? And what if the test is failing? What are the ways to investigate the failure? Can you run the test in headed mode? Can you run it in headless mode? So we'll cover all of that. So let's crack on. So what can you do when your test is failing? Let's have a look. So right now we have got this to-do list test. Let's try to run it and see how it works. So I'm going to run this test and it goes to multiple elements and it fails over here. So when it fails, how do you debug a test? And that's what we are going to tackle over here today. So let's go back to the Playwright documentation and on the left, the section is running and debugging test. In running and debugging test, you can see there are multiple options to run the test. Number one is the UI option. So I would just run, it. I would copy the command npx play write test. The parameter that I'm going to pass in a terminal is the dash UI. So again, if you don't know how to open a terminal, go to terminal on the top, new terminal, and it will open it. Make sure you're on the, in the correct folder, and then you will run npx play write test UI. So let's see how, how this works. So I'm going to run the test. So remember, previously we were running the test from our editor from here. Now I'm going to run the test from this Playwright UI. So as you can see, the Playwright UI went to the first step and it did a snapshot over here. So go to page, which opened this page. And then it took a page snapshot and checked the title. So underneath, you can see the whole test, how it's going through. So at each step, you can move through here and see how the whole test is working. So the first uh, test is for the for taking snapshot. So take snapshot, it goes to this page and takes a snapshot. The second test is has title and it just checks if the page has got the title and you can look at it in the UI. And then the get started link. Now. We were trying to debug a test and that is not in the my first test.spec.ts. That is in the to-do list, to-do spec.ts. So you can see a cross mark over there. I'm going to click on that. And the uh, where it failed, basically, the location that where it failed was this line. So let's have a look. So up until here, it was fine, like doing the go to the page, clicking on the uh, stuff, filling in, and then pressing all the values. But if you look at this red expect not to be checked, here you can see it is already checked. So it shouldn't be checked. So if I, for example, whoever were not to be checked, this, this expect is passing, but this expect is failing because the check is there and we were trying to expect not to be checked. So I'm going to go back to my code and fix it by removing the not. And I'll run the test again. So let's see if it updates. So I didn't have to reopen the UI. I just clicked on play and now the test is success. So that's one way of running and debugging the test. Let's look at the documentation. Another option that is just uh, kind of normal to us, like we have seen it in Cypress, we have seen it in Selenium. The way I normally debug is I run, it, run the test in the headed mode. What is a headed mode and what is a headless mode? So up until now, we have been running the test by clicking the play button over here in the editor. And it goes to the list and now you can see that it passed, but we didn't see anything happening. Everything happened in the background. I want to see it happening in front of me. So I'm going to run npx playwright test dash dash headed. Let's see what happens. So you can see a browser window open. Some, some process was happening on the browser again. This is the next to do list. And now it has completed running all the tests. So it should put out the results. So now it has given us the result of the test, which is there are 12 tests and 12 of 12 are passing. How do we know what tests there were? If you want to open the report, it says, just use this command npx playwright show report. That opens a server. Make sure you, you note this, this is a server. This is not an additional HTML page. So it has opened a server where it is hosting this page. So I'll come, come to it in a bit, like why I'm pointing out that this is a server. Because in most of the tests, like you, you need, like when you're running it on the CI environment, you want the test to generate a report that you can download after the test. And 
there are so many different ways to do that in Playwright. Uh, but let's let's look at this report first. So it ran my first test spec on Chrome browser, Firefox browser, and WebKit. So it is already doing a multi-browser testing out of the box. That's that's a brilliant feature. Like the frameworks that I've been working on, we, we have been just working with Chrome. We, we have not expanded to multiple browsers because you need extra configuration. You need to install drivers and all that shenanigans. In, in this Playwright world, it's out of the box. So that's brilliant. Same thing for to do. It went to uh, ran the same test on three different browsers. What if I wanted to run it on only one browser? So if I go back and look at, uh, for example, it says project and WebKit. I can specify which WebKit project. So I'm going to use this command. Let's see control C. So serving HTML report, that was the server that was running. I've do, done a control C. So if I go back to the report, there's nothing there. So your, there's no report generated in your uh, repository and there's no report generated on the HTML that was there for temporarily period. So we'll, we'll find out in later video, videos how you can do better reporting. For now, let's try NPX Playwright test project WebKit project Firefox. All right, so it ran the test. How do I know it actually ran it on Firefox browser? So the way we do it is in Playwright tests project WebKit, I can add the same parameter dash dash UI. Now you can see that it is opening it in the UI, but this is a Playwright UI. So if I close that, because I, you, you must have seen the Chromium over on top. So if I close that and I do dash dash head it, now you can see that it is a Firefox browser, but on the top it says nightly because it's a nightly build of the Firefox. I haven't specified the version, so it picks the latest build that comes with Playwright. So the you can see the test running very quickly in that browser and it was in headed mode. Now let's try to run the test again, but I'm going to undo my change for the not because I want this test to fail and I want to show you a, a new feature. You might not have seen it before in other frameworks. So it's called trace viewer. So I'm going to run this test again in headed mode because most testers are used to running tests in headed mode to see how uh, it is going through the whole process, how the test is working. And you can see it happening in the background. So that's done. The test has failed. We have got a report. So in this report, we know that this test is failing. I'm going to click on this test and I can see that this test was waiting for this element to not be checked, but it is checked. So it has given me the expected and received over here through which I can identify why it failed. It also gives me the line number where it failed. It also shares a bit of the HTML code. So you can go through that. So it's very good information. Like when you're trying to debug the test, it's all, all you need. Like where did, it, where did it fail? What line of the test it failed on? And what was the reason? So, but where is the trace viewer? There's no trace viewer icon. So now let's go back to the documentation and see how we can use the trace viewer functionality over here. So on the left, you can look at trace viewer. In the trace viewer, you need to enable the recording a trace or you could use a parameter. So for now, we will use the parameter trace on. So I'm going to cancel that. We know that this test will fail. So I'm going to add another parameter, which is let me copy this again, copy and paste. There you go. So I've added dash dash trace on in front of all the parameters. Now it's running the test again. It's doing the same things that it did before. But this time you can see that it has given me a new command. And there's a new icon over here. This window type icon, like tree window icon. So now, like if you remember previously, we were looking at the test and looking at a wide field here but this is more powerful view so either you click on trace over here or go back and click on this icon now let's see what what happened Th this is my favorite bit so I'm, I'm quite excited to show you so remember ui so ui tells you how it, it basically worked so it's similar to that but you have got like a whole timeline of like uh, what happened in the test so you can look at like what happened at each step isn't that amazing so my test failed around six seconds. So you can see on the top, it failed almost around six second limit. And why did it fail? Because, oh, the, there were, it was already checked and I was checking for unchecked. So I should go back and fix my test. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove 
this. My test is now fixed. I'm going to run it again and see if it actually worked. I'm going to keep the trace on just, just so that we can all look at what happened. Keep keeping the head, headed mode on as well. Trace is on, headed is on. Let's do the same thing. Let me see the report. And you can see all the tests have traces. So I'm going to go into that and you can see the test passed and it was checked. So that's, that's wonderful. Like you can see before, after each actions over here, all the before hooks. So you can see fixtures, fixture browser, fixture context, fixture page, what it was doing, where the page was, where, what's the after hook, what happened after the test ended. It has got metadata as well. So this test was ran on Firefox. What was the user agent? What was the viewport? Was it on mobile? What was the scale pages and how many actions there were? What was the duration of it? It's, it's amazing. And I didn't show you the beauty of it. Let's, let's, let me just scroll up in my terminal. Previously, when it failed the test, it gave me this option. NPX playwright show trace test results for slash to do test webkit for slash trace dot zip. So it has created a folder called test results. In here, it has created a folder called webkit. And here there is a trace dot zip file, which contains a set of HTML pages, which is similar to this, which you can upload as an artifact on your CI. And for example, if a test fails, you can download this trace, go to these actions and see, oh, it failed over there. So there, that, that is where I need to investigate. It just makes your life so much easier. It's so easy to debug. So I, I love this feature. So great work play, right guys? So yep, that, that is what I wanted to show you. So we have covered uh, trace, uh, tracer, uh, sorry, trace viewer. Uh, we have covered show reports and we have covered the running and debugging test. And you can look at the other options over here as well, but I have covered the main gist of it. So that should get you going with debugging and running test. Isn't that an amazing feature? I mean, I loved Playwright's Trace Viewer. I'm, I'm a big fan of Playwright just because of this cool feature. Now it will make my life so much easier. Like every time I went into the pipeline when I saw a test failure, it, well, I had to go through so many lines of debugging code. Try, I tried to find like a serenity reports here and there and I had to go through all the uh, pages. This is like live test. Like you could actually see the test running in the Trace Viewer by going to each step and there's a timeline. I, I'm, I'm really amazed by this. So I hope you also enjoyed this video. Let's continue learning. So see you in the next video.